Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now, in our first conversation, uh, it's on the demand by PANDEV, that's the pan Niger Delta Forum, demanding a 50% increase. Uh, that's from 13% derivation. Right. Now, just to also mention that um, you also have some members of the House of Representatives who have requested that uh, a part of the Constitution, subsection 162, subsection 2, 1999, as amended, be deleted. And this is to allow, uh, you know, the revenue directly to the governors. I mean, saying delete this revenue sharing from Lucian from... Uh, you know, the constitution. So that has generated a lot of reaction, a lot of talks. And this is not the first time the issue of derivation is on the front burner of this cause. But we do have uh, with us this morning, we're going to be having a conversation with a spokesperson of Pandev, Ken Robinson. Ken Robinson, thank you for joining us. He is the National Publicity Secretary of Pandev. It's good to have you join us this morning on the show. Good morning to you and good morning to viewers across the world. Good morning, Nigeria. And once again, it's nice to be here and uh, we thank you for this opportunity. Okay, so, so let's go straight to the uh, crux of the matter. What are the concerns of Pandev? Uh, that will be my first question to you. What are your concerns? Uh, concerns, the concerns of Pandev are the concerns of the Niger Delta people. Pandev is committed to the, the, the collective wishes and aspirations, and of course the concerns of the Niger Delta people across the region. And that's what we stand for, that's what we project, that's what we promote, that's our, our focus. Uh, and so our concern concerning this, this uh, demand for 50% of derivation instead of the 13%, is, is, is that uh, that is what it used to be. Let us not forget that following the McPherson's uh, Constitution of 1946 and the Richard's Constitution of 1951. No, Richard uh, Constitution is 1946. Uh, the Richard Constitution is 1946 and the McPherson Constitution is 1951. Yes. Sorry for that, CS. Uh, for, thank you for that correction. So, so it's 1946 Constitution and 1951 Constitution of, uh, of McPherson. Derivation principle became a major factor in revenue sharing in Nigeria. And this was reflected in the 1960 and the 1963 Constitutions of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. At that time, when, when cocoa in the West, uh, granite in the North, and of course, palm produce and coal in the East were the mainstay of the nation's economy, it was 50%. At some point, it was even more than 50%. But it is sad that since oil, crude oil became the economic mainstay of the country, uh, derivation principles uh, have been suppressed, grossly suppressed. Uh, at some point, it was zero. At some point, it was 1%. And uh, during the upper deck period, it was 1.3%. And uh, thank goodness that those who, who framed the 1999 constitution and, of course, the, the constitutional conference before then, uh, increase it to 13%, to, to which is even paltry compared to the 50% that other regions were enjoying when they had their, their own resources. So what Pandev is saying is that let us go back to what it used to be. Uh, ridiculously, some dishonorable members of the National Assembly are, are thinking of deleting derivation principle because the, the target is derivation principle. Their concern is the 13%. Don't forget that the derivation principle was included to, to kind of recompense the, the, the people of any area in Nigeria where natural resources we are, we are being exploited. And, and due to the consequences of the operations of the industry, the Niger Delta have suffered a lot. Our environment has been degraded, livelihoods, means of livelihood have been devastated. Our people are living in abject poverty and the government of Nigeria has not done enough to, to, to kind of uh, if you like to say, to, to, to improve the resulting their standard of living of our people. The Niger Delta today has been reduced to a region of struggle for survival, you know, and, and, and it is so, so annoying, so provocative that some persons will consider even deleting the, the paltry 13% that we are, we, we are even being given. And, and it's not even 13% as it were, complete 13%, because if it is 13%, it's every revenue earned by Nigeria through crude oil, the 13 percent should, 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 should apply to it. But what they do today is, is the uh, benchmark for the budget that the 13 percent applies to. So the excess crude account, we should get 13 percent of it if it is 13 percent. But now the Niger Delta people position is that it is 50 percent or nothing less. Okay, so uh, 
Well, I also like to find out uh, the demand for 50%. 50, 50 uh, are you demanding for host communities or is Pandev demanding for governors? Because I also remember that there's been uh, some kind of conflict between, you know, stakeholders and governors. So who is Pandev demanding the 50% increase for? Pandev's position is that there is no difference between governors and host communities. The governors are elected by the people of Niger Delta of their states. If by reason of a faulty 1999 constitution, uh, there, are, there are no strong institutions to, to, to check uh, the excesses of governors. Don't forget that the constitution of Nigeria has made the president of Nigeria to be like a god of Nigeria. And the governors are demigods. So it's not the problem of, of the governors. It's, it's the faulty constitution. If, if the, 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 the people have the power as it is, it, it is supposed to be, uh, the governors will not uh, do what is not in line with the people. So we are not asking for host communities, we are not asking for governors, we are asking for the people of Niger Delta. Niger Delta belongs to everybody. The governors come from a community. If, if we are in a proper system, a proper constitution where there are checks and balances, some of the excesses and, uh, that we are seeing being demonstrated by, by governors, not just governors of the Niger Delta, governors across the 36 states of the Federation and, and of course uh, the, the presidency, the excesses, the, 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 the dictatorial tendencies, will not be there if we have a proper system, if we have a proper democratic structures and institutions to, to, to monitor and check the excesses uh, 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 of, of, this, of these elected officials. So, so, so we are asking for the Niger Delta people. The Niger Delta is demanding 50% of, of our resources before we talk about sharing. That is what it used to be. The, that is what the North in, 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 before now used to... to to, to develop their area and, and they provided massive scholarships to their people. That is what the West used to, to advance itself, building the first this and the first that and the first this, and then provided massive education, free education at all levels, because they had 50% of resources. Now we are being given at some point 0% by, by the decree of 1959, where it was said that it was to, to because they wanted to, to, to use resources for the war. The war has been over for about 50, 60 years. And, and we are still talking about derivation here. We want 50%. That's the position of the Niger Delta people. Okay. And for those who think that they can delete the derivation, we have said it is a legislative coup against mineral producing areas of Nigeria and regions of Nigeria. And those men are dishonorable. They don't have any reason to be in the Federal House of Representatives of Nigeria. So uh, you have also mentioned that 0%. When you say 0% allocated, what, what does that mean? Can you please clarify that? Please come again. You talked about zero uh, percent allocation. What does zero uh, percent allocation yes, mean? What I'm saying is that at some point in the 70s, it was zero percent allocation. There was no that is there was, there was no derivation. Derivation was zero at at some point in Nigeria. And then uh, I think it was during the the Babangida regime when they set up uh, Umpadek uh, Oil Mineral Producing Areas Development Commission. It was 1.3 percent. Uh, today it is by reason of the Constitution of 1999 is 13%. We are saying yes, and that, that there should have been a review every five years. The, the derivation principle has not been reviewed for over 20, about 22 years. So we are saying at this time, we want 50%. That's what it used to be. What others enjoy, the Niger Delta people should also enjoy. It is, it is disturbing that the Nigerian state, and by extension, Nigerians from other regions of this country, continue to treat the Niger Delta in such a shabby manner. We have breastfed Nigeria for all these years. Without the food from Niger Delta, we don't know what Nigeria would have been like. Okay, so let's... Uh, so enough of this, this, this neglect, enough of this regard. We deserve, we are critical stakeholders. In fact, as one of our leaders will say, we are critical shareholders of the Nigerian project. And to be treated better... What others enjoy, the Niger Delta people should also enjoy it. So we are asking for 50% derivation. Uh, although I was hoping for some clarity with who uh, Pandev is representing at this point in time, whether the host communities, which are stakeholders, uh, or um, you know the governors at this point in time. But however, you also have stakeholders, I mean, uh, persons, host communities, saying that the demand for 50% increase is not, uh, you know, governors have not been able to justify it. 
Um, they have not been able to judiciously explain how 13% is used because the issue of um, infrastructure deficit is still very great in the region as uh, you don't have access to portable water, drinking water, and uh, road infrastructure, amongst other issues. So uh, I'd like you to share your thoughts on that. Th these stakeholders are let saying me, that me, the governors have not been very judicious in spending the 13% uh, you know, that has been uh, allocated to the region. That, that narrative is neither here nor there. And it's a narrative that uh, some sections of the country, some very uninformed persons uh, in the corridors of power have also been uh, um, uh, touting that uh, what have you done with the resources that have been given to you. Uh, unfortunately, some of these persons have never been to the Niger Delta. The host communities are complaining now. Members of the host communities are complaining. No, let, let me let me come. What I'm saying is this, and it's categorical, quotes us anywhere. We are speaking for the Niger Delta people. There is no well-informed, there is no well-meaning Niger Delta person who is without political and pers personal prejudice that will say that the demand for 50% is out of place. No Niger Delta. Anyone you hear saying that is say is a political psychophant or, or is aggrieved. For, for one reason or the other, the Niger Delta people are dissatisfied with the way we have been treated by the Nigerian state. And, and so the position of the Niger Delta people, and Pandev is not speaking for those communities. Pandev is not speaking for governors. Pandev is speaking for the collective interests of the Niger Delta people. That's what we stand for. We had a meeting on Monday, and we had people, traditional rulers, leaders of those communities, representatives of governments, and, and, and activists, youth women leaders were in that meeting. Pandev represents the collective interests and aspirations of the Niger Delta people. And that's what we're saying, that whether the governors have used these resources properly or not, is secondary. But have they done so? No, to some extent. But it is not peculiar to the Niger Delta. It's a Nigerian problem. And it arises from the faulty constitution we have because there are no proper checks and balances. The assemblies are in the pockets of the governors. The national assembly is in the pocket of the president. That is the situation we have in Nigeria, and that's why we are asking for fundamental changes uh, in terms of restructuring of, of the political system, of the constitution, and of the structure of Nigeria. Until we have a proper structure where things are done rightly, we will have to continue to have these complaints. But to say that because perhaps one governor or the other is not doing what uh, somebody thinks that he should do, and so we, the, the people of Niger Delta should be denied what is their right, is, is completely ridiculous. We are saying that the people of Niger Delta say we are tired of this, this disregard, we are tired of this neglect, and we want 50% derivation as it used to be. That's the underlying factor. That is what obtained when there was cocoa and granite as mainstays of the nation's economy. Why is it different now that it is crude oil? Because we are Niger Delta people, because we are minorities? Is it because of the diversities and the complexities of the Niger Delta? God has a reason why he has made us so and has blessed this land with this so much resources. Perhaps and definitely to compensate for the, 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 the difficult terrain that we live in. Let those who are spared to lead Nigeria, go around Nigeria, visit Nigeria, and know this country. Most of us speak from ESA and destinations. They don't know Nigeria. We don't know this country. We don't love this country. If we love this country, we will not do some of the things that we've been doing as leaders of Nigeria. Okay, but one of the major concerns in a country, I mean, like you've rightly mentioned, is the issue of accountability. And uh, we have never seen anywhere in the world where funds and resources are enough. And no one is also saying that, you know, the demand for 50% is not okay or it's, uh, I mean, it's not your right to demand for that. But the question still is, with the 13% that has been put out, uh, that's been given for about 22 or thereabout, uh, how efficient, what infrastructures... Uh, what projects can you categorically mention that, you know, the region has actually achieved with that uh, f uh, or with the resources that has been allocated? The, can the, you mention any, best, any development, any yes, structure, the anything? Best response, the best response would be to say that how I wish we had pictures of what Niger Delta used to, used to be in 1998, 1999, the roads, the, 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 the structures, and then what it is today. In River State, where I come from, in 1999, there was no road to Opoko Kingdom, a riverine community. Today, there is a road you can drive to Opoko. You can drive to Andoni, by, by, to, to Inkoro. That's, that's, that's development. Uh, uh, is that enough? Perhaps no. They could have done better. But the fact remains that if you have tools 
that, that you can abuse, you will abuse them. We are human beings. When there are no checks and balances, look at what is going on in the National Assembly. Look, look at what is going on across all the states. When local government elections are conducted in, in, in a particular state, 90% or 80% or 100% of, 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 of elected officials are from the party controlling the state. Does that mean that all the other parties didn't have people that are liked by, by, by the citizens of those states? We have issues, fundamental issues in Nigeria, and it boils down to the constitution we, we were operating with. We are saying for Nigeria to stand firmly as a united, progressive, uh, indivisible country, they are asked to be restructuring. When we have restructured and the people have the power to choose those that will become their governors and senators, the House of Assembly members, the House of Rep members, and even the president, they will begin to behave better. But to say that there is no development in the Niger Delta is, 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 is a fallacy. And most of those who are saying these things outside the Niger Delta are people who don't know the Niger Delta. They come to Portaco, they go to Rio, they go to Ori, and, and perhaps uh, Bini City or Yenegu, and, and they think that they have seen Niger Delta. That's, that's, that's not the, the complete Niger Delta. Go to Ekeremo, go to Kolama, go to Kola, go to, go to Ibeno that was uh, mobile and, 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 and look at the roads. What has the federal government done? What, what is the extent of contribution by, by the IOCs? So we are asking that if, we, if the Niger Delta region has 50%, as the West and the North and the East used to have, development will be fast-tracked and we will have a better living for our people. Okay, but, uh, you know, uh, it feels like there seems to be some contradiction because... Um the argument is that one of the arguments is that the resources or the the resources is not uh, sufficient. These funds are inadequate. Thirteen percent is inadequate to address uh, address issues that you know the region is faced with. And so, on the other hand, you're saying uh, you know you already have development and there are a lot of infrastructure. So, uh, on which side should we now stay? There is no contradiction. The, the development aspect is to answer the question and debunk the claim. The fallacious claim that there has not been done with the 13 percent we've been receiving for some years now. That's not true. There are changes. The changes are not enough because the resources are not enough. But the demand for 50 percent is beyond the resources not being enough. We're saying do what you used to do for others. There should be no discrimination. There should be no biases. When it was cocoa in the West, when it was granite in the North, when it was palm oil and coal in the East, it was 50 percent. That's what it used to be. We are saying, let's revert back to that. That's the, that's the cross of the demand. The, the other issues are secondary. And let me emphasize that there is no true Niger Delta, no well-meaning, no well-informed Niger Delta that is without political and personal biases or prejudice against any of these political office holders that will say that 50% demand is out of place because he, he or she thinks 13% has not been used um, appropriately to his satisfaction or to our satisfaction. The Niger Delta people are saying enough of this, this, this kind of very shabby treatment, enough of the disregard. We, 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 we will not accept anything less than 50% going forward. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, but um, you also mentioned the issue of restructuring. And uh, it brings to mind why Pandev is asking for a 50% increase, uh, why not ask for resource control? So why are you asking that you have a 50% increase uh, instead of asking for resource control that allows you to control your resources? True um, fiscal Delta federalism. We are, not rapacious. we are not greedy, self-centered people. We are very generous people. And we have demonstrated goodwill to the Nigerian state for, for all these years even before independence. We have been very accommodating. We are very loving people. And it is in that spirit, and in the letters of the constitutions of, 19, of, of 1960 and 1963, and it is in that spirit that we are saying, revert back to 50%, what you should obtain. Asking for 100%, and then uh, we, we, are not, we are not very greedy people. We are, we are, we are, we are not self-centered. We, we, we love this country. We, we want Nigeria to progress. We want Nigeria to be united. We want a peaceful and progressive Nigeria. And, and that's why we are saying, look, this is what you used to do. Let us go back to the standards where. So are you saying that Pandev is not in support of true fiscal federalism? Our, our, we have submitted papers on our devolution of powers. 
and 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 we have asked for 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 resource control to the extent that that is the demand that states and uh, states should control their resources and pay some some amount of money to to, to the center as a compromise to the nigerian states niger delta people are saying let us have 50 percent of our resources and then let us put 50 percent in this this distributable pool Okay, so um, let's move away from that now. In the communique that was signed, some of the concerns that, uh, that you made or some of the points that was raised is the fact that uh, you said the Niger Delta people are ready and mobilized to dispense full resistance against this wicked uh, mechanization, if I'm correct, and any future attempt to further uh, economically uh, take away the region and its people from what they actually deserve. And this is me paraphrasing. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, what does that really mean? Because when you say uh, full resistance, it feels like, you know, some sort of force. Can you please throw more light on that? It's that it's a wicked and satanic attempt to deprive the Niger Delta people of even the little that we are getting. For whatever reason, uh, one cannot fathom why 59 members of, of the House of Representatives from a section of the country may move to delete section, subsection 2, section 162 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Uh, that act is a call to anarchy. And so it's a message to those dishonorable 59 members of the House of Representatives and to their backers, whoever they are, that the Niger Delta people can no longer be taken for granted, and that we are ready to resist them with, with, with every fiber in our vein. So what approach is uh, Pandev going to take uh, to ensure that their, their demands have been met? Uh, what are the approach that you have put out? And prior to this time, what efforts have you made as uh, you know, a body to ensure that you know, government actually heeds and those who are re responsible or stakeholders pay attention to uh, your request? It is, it is sad that the only language the Nigerian state, as, as it appears, listens to is the, is the language of violence. It's, it's sad. Everything the Niger Delta has gotten from the Nigerian state has been through one form of resistance or the other. And, and we can go back to the days of, even before independence, to the days of Adakaburo and, and down to Ken Sarua and until 2016, the Niger Delta Avengers and, and men and all that. The, the history is, 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 is a sad history. And, and it's unfortunate that a country of responsible people will treat a very special uh, region of the country in this manner. And so the message we are sending to the rest of Nigeria is that, look, you, you are taking us for granted for too long. And this act, this attempt to delete section, subsection two, uh, section 162 of the constitution is an affront and a complete a satanic attempt to tell the Niger Delta people that you can do your worst. And we are saying to them, if it gets to that level, perhaps the Niger Delta people will do their worst. And I say this as a very responsible citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that is committed to the fundamental rights and well-being of his people, the Niger Delta people. Okay, so um, uh, just as we begin to coast it down now, uh, what would be your, uh, if you have the opportunity now to uh, speak to those who are responsible, what would be your uh, request right now? What would you, would you be saying to them as we coast this conversation down? Let, let, let us, uh, we're speaking to Mr. President and, and um, in, the, in the next couple of days, PANDEF and leaders, stakeholders in the Niger Delta will be reaching out to various uh, PowerPoints and, and, and speak to the people to, to talk, talk to their people. That look, it's, it's let us not stoke the ambers of, further stoke the ambers of this discord and this unity and this harmony in the country. There are fundamental issues that need to be addressed by the presidency and the National Assembly and, and not to attempt to begin to cause more people to get to vote. And so we are saying, please be, be, be reasonable, be sensitive, and, and do the things that are right. Let us move the, unless we don't want. Uh, Nigeria to progress, unless we don't want Nigeria to, to, to exist, unless we don't want Nigeria to be peaceful. And, and we are saying that those men who, who, who sponsor that bill and their backers are in fact terrorists because they don't want peace in Nigeria. 
All right, thank you so much, uh, uh, Ken Robinson, for being part of the conversation this morning. Uh, we do wish you the very best with your quest uh, in asking for 50% increase in derivation from 13%. Thank you so much. Thank you, Profile. Uh, thanks once again, and thank you so much for this opportunity. God bless you. Well, that's so much that we can take at this point in time. We'll definitely step on the brakes. And when we return, uh, you know, more conversations will come through right here. Please stick around. Good morning.